saying? And you, ha you have to make a differentiation. And it's nice to say to the child, okay, next time you'll do better. That's not the answer. I think you have to really find out if that person is in the right is in the right pew. Good. So that's that's what I'm gonna say next. Oh Come on, so. he's done. <laughs> no, you don't you don't know what I'm gonna say after that though. No, so first before we even get even to the eighths of that Rabbi Nachman is saying, which we're gonna to get to, person has to make sure that the vote that he's doing or the way he's going about it or his goal is according to his level. And he's putting the right techniques in to place. And Mr. Parker is saying, it, if you're going to do something and it's just off, and you're doing it the wrong way, what do you expect is going to come out? We have to, you have to ask Eitzes. You have to ask from a, from a Rebbe, from another person, do you think this makes sense? Or I'm trying this, what's your feedback? Very often in our own minds, we think we know what we're doing, especially when it comes to spiritual things. What do you mean? It's very simple. I should learn, I should dive. And I, it's so simple. But there's so many things, so many factors that go in. There's so many things. It's just always, that's how it is in life. And sometimes you need to bounce ideas off other people. Before you start to give up and become depressed and sad and angry that your vote isn't going, are you doing what's according to your level? Are you doing the avodas that you're supposed to be doing? A person who's Who's, uh, who's trying to start working on his davening. And he says, today, I'm going to daven the whole thing with concentration. The whole thing. So you ask the guy, listen, it's, very, it's, it's beautiful. That's an amazing, it's an amazing accomplishment, feat. Like, what percentage of your davening right now do you daven with kavana? Say like 7%. Someone's like, you today want to go from 7% to 100%. I was like, yeah, that's what God wants, right? So you say, well, he does want that, but that's not realistic. That's not possible. You're going to crash and burn. You might get to 10%. You might even get lucky and get to 20%. You're not going to get more than that. And if you set those goals too high, what did you expect? Right? <clears throat> so that's, first of all, a person has to know. Where it's all, again, R&D, research and development. It's okay. Come back. Work it out again. Before we even get to the sicha, a person has to know, are there any external factors that are disturbing his avodah? <clears throat> Every day, I, have it, I love this. I can't get it for that one. I can't do it. It's just, it's just so hard. So first question I ask, well, what time did you go to bed? Two o'clock. You went to two o'clock in the morning and you're trying to get up for seven o'clock minion? Do you usually sleep five hours a night? No, I usually sleep seven hours a night. So what are you thinking? You're, you're not in the right external matzah. You need more sleep. How about you go to sleep at 12, 11, 10 would be the best, imagine. You go to sleep at 10, you can wake up at 5 or refreshed. 5 o'clock is a good time to dive in and to learn. So you have to, so before you start becoming depressed again by your avodah Hashem that's not going, are you, are you hungry? Maybe, maybe your learning in the morning is not going well because you're hungry. You need a, you know, you need a little bit of a, a power, what are they called, the power bars? The, you know, whatever it is. You can't focus at 9 o'clock in the morning. I, you, have, you have the teachers tell, the PTA, that you go to the PTA, and the Rebbe says, you know, can you make sure your kid eats breakfast? Because he's every single day, he's, he's, he's rummaging around his bag, he's hungry, I'm not letting him eat, then he gets, he can't focus. This is, what, this is what the teachers tell a lot of the parents. Get the kids to eat breakfast. That's why a lot of yeshivas have breakfast there. A lot of kids, their parents come and they have to run out to work and they don't have to... So that's, uh, that, so the schools understand that and therefore they have to provide the kids. You gotta, you have to be in the right external, all the external factors, it has to be as, you know, as much as you can be in the right situation so that you can properly do your voda and succeed. Now, let's say you're in the right level. You're trying to do the right voda according to your level. And you have all the external situations are properly set. And it's still not going. It's still just not working out. And it becomes very difficult for this person. So this is where the sicha, this is where the sicha starts. <clears throat> now some can learn, like we were saying in the beginning, that this is Rabbi Nachman like patting on the back. It's okay, child. You know, you yourself. Keep going. 
you tried, and there's truth to that. We don't want to throw away our Hodas Hashem and say, I'm never diving again because it's not going for a week or a month. And every Nachman has to pick us up and says, no, you could do this, you could do this. For sure that's Amos. But I think there's something, there's something much deeper. And if you read very carefully, <clears throat> there's, there's a lot of depth. This is not just a Bidi Eved Eitzah. Like, oh, you tried, but do it again. Come on, Shabbat Yibbal Tzadik, you can get up. <clears throat> so what is he saying over here? That when it comes to performing mitzvahs, Pick any mitzvah you want. We think, and I think we've spoken about this a lot of times in different areas, we think that if, the, if we want to do a certain task and we do the task, we're successful, we're accomplished. If we don't do the task that we set out to do, then we're a loser, we're a failure. That's pretty much how people live life. Did you make the buck? Did you make the grade? Yes or no. That's how the physical world works. That's how America runs, right? Did you do it or did you not do it? Bottom line, that's all that matters. But when it comes to the mitzvahs and it comes to the Hashem, it's the complete opposite. Generally, spirituality is the complete opposite of the physicality. And the truth is, is that <clears throat> when we're performing mitzvahs, we have three main levusha and nefesh. I have three main garments of the soul that act and perform by a mitzvah. For example, when we're doing a mitzvah, the most obvious is the doing. You're taking tefillin and you wrap it on your arm. It's called an asiyah. But when you're wrapping that tefillin on your arm, there's also a whole world, a whole world of feelings that you can inject and connect when you do that mice. Ahav is Hashem, Yer is Hashem, Tzvaik is Hashem, Amenuch is Right? There's so many different emotions, feelings that a person is supposed to proactively be in a state of when he's doing that mitzvah. And what's the last of Lushay Nefesh? Your mind, your thoughts, your thinking. Right? The way that the soul lives through in this world is through thinking, feeling, and our actions. That manifests itself in this world through those three parts. So when a person is doing the mitzvah, he's wrapping his tone on, hopefully he's feeling something of a simcha maybe, a, that, he's, that he's a Jew, he's able to do such a mitzvah, or he's feeling Avas Hashem, or he's even feeling, even, even, I'm doing this because I have Yeras Hashem, that I know this is what I'm supposed to do, and I'm doing it. Even that is something. And at the same time, he's thinking in his mind. He's connecting to Kodesh Baruch Hu. This is an actual mitzvah that I'm doing. I was commanded. I'm doing this mitzvah. Very simple. But he's thinking. Right? Very often, we're either not thinking anything at all, or we're spacing out and thinking about work or something that happened in the house while we're wrapping our tefillin. But when a person aligns himself with the different Luvushay Nefesh, he's thinking about the mitzvah of Kodesh Baruch Hu. He's feeling the mitzvah of Kodesh Baruch Hu. And he's doing the mitzvah. Now you've done a mitzvah b'shlemus, a full mitzvah. Okay. Now when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to our mitzvahs, says Rabbi Nachman, he says the line is da, you should know. Da, you should know. this that shemis yagim uluhutim lasos ezavoda olekadesh atzmi. These are, he says, three different things here. Your miyageya, ulhutim, lakadesh atzmi. He says three different things. What are these three different things? He says that which your miyageya means you're trying to do the asiya. <clears throat> Rabbi Nachman is going to speak about, Chavah Zalobah speaks about it, many of the Siddiqim speak about it, that the actual avodah l'maysa, all you can do is try. You could get the lulav and the esrog, you could buy it, you could bring it to shul, but to actually shake it, up to a Kodesh Baruch, what happens if a person takes your lulav and esrog? You put it down in the spot, you put it down in your seat, you walk out to the bathroom, you come back, it's not there. You, yeah, you, you are so close, it's not there. person wakes up in the morning, and he goes to the mikvah, and he has a coffee, 
and he learns a black gemara before, and he has his achonus for davening, and he gets the davening, he's already, he goes blank. Or he starts thinking about something, that some, some crazy thought comes in his head about work, or he's nervous or something, and there goes his old davening. You, got, you did everything you could do, you got to the point, and then you couldn't perform the mitzvah. Success or failure? <clears throat> Success. Because the actual lamaisa, the gemar, is up to Kodesh Baruch. You, we can't force anything. I had the lulav and by my seat. What more could I have done? I should have taken it with me to the bathroom? Just strapped it to myself? That's not normal. So you did what you could do. Your miyageya, success. We don't always count that. We always think, no, I didn't do the mitzvah, so I'm a big loser. Says Rabbi Nachman, no, that's not, that's not how you, that's not true. L'chatechila, that's not true. Your miyageya, you did your thing. What's the next word? Ulhutim. What's ulhutim? Again, to be excited. Take a look at, try looking it up. I think it needs to be excited. That's the feeling. That's the emotion. <clears throat> Says Rabbi Nachman, you were excited to do the mitzvah. Your levusha nefesh of the heart, the regish, the emotions, the feelings. You did it. You wanted to be excited to do this mitzvah. You tried to daven. You tried to learn. You tried to do levanesu. You were so excited, and it didn't go. Feelings check success, and then what does he say? He says, or a person what? He's lekadesh atzma of ezek kedusha. What was it? Remember last week? We start off the Rabbi Nachman says, Ashrenu, that we have Kedusha Yisrael. Remember this? And we said, we waited to the end to explain what does it mean Kedusha Yisrael? What did it mean Kedusha? So we explained last week, <clears throat> I even wrote about it in the Dvar Torah last week, based on what we learned, is that Kedusha, when you take an animal, you take a specific animal out of the flock for a specific <clears throat> carbon, right? You're Makadish that animal. You designated, you focused in on that animal for this task. You go to a lady. Hareat Mikudeshis Li. You now designated, she is only for you. She cannot be anywhere else. She, now a man can marry more than one woman, but a woman is now designated, focused. She can only be for this man. That's Kedusha. When you designate your focus, your time on something, you narrow, you narrow yourself, the Kedusha, but we don't like to be narrow-minded. Narrow-minded is not good. <coughs> but here we're doing it in a healthy, proactive way. If you narrow your focus, you are Makadesh, whatever that's in your focus. So if, you're in, so if we wake up in life, right? We, have, we can do a billion things. We can do anything we want in life. There's no rules. But if we say my entire life is going to be focused on Dvekis, Vashem, that's everything I do in this world. I'm going to focus it towards the Vegas, like Mr. Sharm says. So when I do my Vodas Hashem, it's to be Davik to Kodesh Baruch. When I go to eat, it's going to be specifically so I can be Davik to Kodesh Baruch in all the different ways that that could be. When I go to work, the, the end goal of that work is to become Davik to Kodesh Baruch. You are now Makadish your entire life to Kodesh Baruch. Everything you do now flows through that narrow that you created, the Kedusha, that narrow pipe, and now your entire life becomes Kaddish. Right? Your entire life becomes Kaddish. So what is that? Where does that, how does that occur, the Kedusha? It happens in your mind. Designation. Focus. So says Rabbi Nachman, if it burns me Geya, he worked hard in the Asiya, check, success. If you're Luhutim and you were excited, you tried to bring yourself to an Ahavaz Hashem or a Simcha Shel Mitzvah, Check. And if you were Makadish yourself or an Eze Kedusha, meaning you set your mind to do this mitzvah, check. You now, Lechatchila, used every Levusha and Nefesh properly. The mind, the heart, and the hands to do this mitzvah. And even if it doesn't go, success. If it was the proper, again, if it was the proper Avoda according to the current level of who you were, it just wasn't going. You did everything you had to do. You're good. It's lechatchila. It's not bediyevit. Oh, feel better. Just get up. You know, be mechazik yourself. No. Your mom just did what you had to do. It's a, it's a whole different way of thinking about it. 
Make sense? I think that you see very careful in his words. He has these words, miyageya, lohutim, and then lakadish atzmi. Three different words. <clears throat> so says Renach Vaitri says, Zeb atzmo shehen misyagim luhutim achazeh. This day the person tries, and he's excited, he tries to be emotional about the mitzvah. Hu bechinas karbonos. This is the Indian of a carbon. The bechinas, like David Amalek says in Tehillim, for, for you, we sacrificed ourselves. For you, we killed ourselves. We slaughtered ourselves like a sheep going to slaughter. And one could say that the goal of Avodah Hashem is to be totally subservient to a Kaddish Baruch to the point that we'd be ready to die. Right? We, we have that. We say that every single day. You should love your God. You should love your God to the point that you'd be willing to die. If that's the Ratzon Hashem, <coughs> that's Ratzon Hashem. Now, Baruch Hashem, most people never have to give up their life for Kaddish Baruch Hu. Unfortunately, we've had many, many instances, but I, don't, I think the vast majority of Jews over, over time have not had to give up their lives. But I once, I once learned a Torah, I believe, I don't want to say for sure, but I think it was in the Siva Shalom. <clears throat> and he said by the Akedah, by the Akedah, both Avram and Yitzhak being tested. Avram to kill, and Yitzhak to be killed. Right? They're both tested. Avram to kill his own son, Yitzhak to die. Okay, this Hashem. So I believe, I could be wrong, so I don't want to say, so don't take my word for it. We'll have to look it up afterwards. I don't have a chance. <clears throat> Whose test was harder? Now, this is a, it's a little bit of a crazy question. Because we really have no idea. We have no saga. But everybody would say, it's a good thing. Okay, it's to die. We're not arguing, of course. We have no idea what that means. We should never know what that means. But something to, to think about is that Yitzhak Gavinu, if he would have passed this test, he's in Ganed. Next second. Avram Avinu, if he would have passed this test, would have to live with that the rest of his life. He has to live with the fact that he was Moser Nefesh, that when that Moser Nefesh, every day. So there's a concept of Moser Nefesh, a once in a... Once in a lifetime, a person has a da'al kiddush Hashem, which again, we should never know from. And then there's the concept of Mesir Snefesh, a daily Mesir Snefesh. <clears throat> when a person has to fight against his animalistic desires, not taivas, his wants, so we have to destroy, right? if it's wrong, if it's inappropriate, we have to destroy that rutz and that taiva, because that's not what a kiddush wants. We have to slaughter ourselves. And if a person, even in spiritual, wants, hopes, expectations, spiritual, davening, learning, mitzvahs, midos, he has all these big goals. Again, and we think, listen, what, what, what could be better than this? This is what a Kodesh Baruch wants from us. And yet, sometimes, it doesn't always go. A person has to be ready to, to, to slaughter his ratzim, so Kaddish Baruch is Ratzim. What, are we going to kick and scream and become cranky and say, Kaddish Baruch, if you don't let me learn better, I'm not learning anymore. If you don't let me dive in better today, I'm, I'm trying. If you don't let me dive in better today, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. That's not, that's not being a sheep. That's not being a subservient evit to a Kaddish Baruch. Sometimes a Kaddish Baruch, sometimes the test is dafka when it gets hard. Right? We, dive, we try to dive in a hundred times, it doesn't go. And then by the hundred first time, we're like, okay, this is, this is getting crazy. I, I, can't, I can't keep going on like this. That's when the test starts. First hundred times, you weren't so bothered by it. Okay. Didn't go. You weren't so bothered. Fine. It's the hundred and first time when you're already like, this is getting crazy. And this is. Now your test is starting. Now you have to fight against those feelings and say, I'm still going to try. So when the test starts, but how many people are able to handle that? No, I already tried a hundred times. That's it, I can't do it anymore. And we understand them. We understand it's not so simple. But that's when the test starts. That's a person that says, say, okay, it's a Kaddish Baruch Hu's it's not my Ratzim. I have to do what I have to do. I have to be Moser Nefesh, be willing to give up my spiritual hopes. Kaddish Baruch doesn't want. That's what he wants, that's what he wants. <laughs> this pasuk 
Kelech al-Rag Nikol Yom Nechshav Nechtzam Tivach, that when a person was supposed to prepare ourselves to be slaughtered <coughs> like a sheep, it's brought into Kunei Zohar, referring specifically, she's a Bechinus Tevilah. It's referring to Tevilah. She Bechinus Karbanos. Tevilah is the Makam Karbanos. Hainu Kishirot, some less pile of any Minichin Osam of Babylon also. When a person wants to daven, but they don't leave him alone, he doesn't say who they are. They don't leave him alone. Right? The thoughts don't leave him alone. The desires don't leave him alone. The eights of hearts aren't leaving him alone. And with Albulim also, they're confusing him. They're coming with him. They're coming with him. He can't dive in. There's something. There's, there's a guy who's diving too loud next to him. There's some bird tapping on the window. And all this stuff that, that happens to a person when he's trying to dive in. They're not letting him. He's trying so hard to reconcentrate, <coughs> refocus, move to a different place. Put in earplugs. He's trying. He really is trying. He does he's trying. Even if his tefila doesn't come out according to the way he thought it should be, it didn't come out with too much kavana. He probably said the words, maybe, maybe he didn't say all the words. But nevertheless, the yigiyah that he put in, the toiling, the effort that he put in, with all his koho, umosur nafsho, and he was Moser Nefesh. He wanted it to go smooth. Why? Listen, because you're again, spirituality. Listen, let it go smooth. No. Like Moser Nefesh, he, put, he concentrated all of his kochos to put in. He was Moser Nefesh. That's about Kuroi. The fact that he did that, This itself is the beginning of Karbonos. And what's a carbon? To die. That's all the whole of a carbon. To be shechted. But not to be thrown to the dirt, to be raised up. And we shech the carbon, and the carbon dies, and it becomes a nafas ruach to Kodesh Right? It's not that stam, we're just wasting it. Oh, this didn't work out. Next. <clears throat> we shech the carbon, and then that becomes the nafas ruach. You put it on a fire, he burns up straight to Kodesh Baruch. That's the biggest. So when we try, and we try, and it doesn't go. We try again, and we try again, and we try again, it's not going. And we shech that rotsen. Either the rotsen to stop, Got buddy already. It's like enough already. I can't keep doing this. No, no. That's what wants me. To, I have to continue. So we destroy that rutzen of ours to stop. We say no. We're going to keep going. Or we had these high hopes that we become this big tzaddik or this big person or this or that, and it's not happening. But we become okay with what we can do. So we slaughter those old hopes and wants and dreams of spirituality. That goes to the highest place. Because where we get a real nachas from it. You, you did what you had to do. Maybe that's all he wanted you to do. Haraya, that's... That, if it didn't go, that's what he wanted from you. Meaning, if the task didn't go, he wants your heart. Right? What does the Gemara say? Rachmana, liba, boy. Because Baruch wants your heart. That's what the Gemara says. He say he wants your avoda, he wants your avoda lamaisa. What does the Kaddish Baruch want you want more? You to shake a little of an esrit with no feeling? Or you to have a feeling without a little of an esr. Of course, get a little of an and have the feeling. But if you don't have a little of the guy took it. So what does he want you to do? You get back to your seat and there's no little of He wants you to go destroy everybody in the basement. Who took my little of I can't do my mitzvah anymore. And go screaming. And you, get, and you find the guy who did it. And you start berating him before, before Hesia, the rabbin. Destroying the person. How could you take away my mitzvah? Obviously, that's, that's crazy. Because you want something else from you. It could be a Kaddish Baruch who wants something else in you than what you anticipated. It's possible. It's possible. So that's a, it's a big zach. Kielecha ragni, kol yom. That's the ikra of Oga, to be prepared to die a Kaddish Hashem. It doesn't mean physically die. It means kill that rotsin that you have. For a Kaddish Baruch rotsin. Ukemoke mechol avodah zukdusha shadam lo tzadagadash atzmo. And any avodah, any kedusha that person wants to be mekadish himself and to do afo pisha in a zocha, even if he's not able to, chas v'shom and kadish atzmo for life, he doesn't do the task that he wanted to do. He wasn't able to accomplish himself the way he wanted to. All the toiling that he went through, all the pain and the suffering and the confusions that he fought through because he wanted to accomplish himself, but they didn't let him. That every moment that you fought, that was bechin of karbanos, bechin of kelecha or ragni kol yom nechsham nechsham tivcha. Which is, the Mishra Perkyo says, Lafum Tsara Agra. According to the pain, is the gain. That's not a bit the evid. 
It's not about completing the task. It's about how much effort did you put in? How much Mr. Snevers did you Mr. Snevers did you put in? Al Kain, al Adamasis as Shalot Tami. A person has to do his thing. We learned this morning, this lotion, same lotion. A person has to do his thing. You try to do what you're supposed to do. You get out some of Vodas Hashem to try your best to work hard. Whatever you could do, whatever you could muster, do it. Don't think, but it's not going to go. It hasn't gone. All this das, all this bibulum. Don't just do what you have to do. Whatever you have the ability to do, I say, do it. You can only get to 20%. Do the 20%. Don't say, I'm not doing it. Because what's the point of 20%? No, do the 20%. Whatever you could do. You know it's very difficult. It appears to him, right, which is false dimyonos. It appears to him that they're not going to let him do anything. It seems like a kaddish baruch who is pushing him away, or whoever is pushing him away from doing this. He's not able to properly perform the task of kedusha. Even so, all of the do what you have to do. And Hashem, in his in the goodness of his eyes, he'll do what he has to do. Just do what you have to do. And it's not a bid It's a lichat You want to do the mitzvah, you try to do the mitzvah, you try to muster up some emotion, you did it. Whatever happens, we have to disconnect. We have to disconnect our thoughts, emotions, and understanding from the end result. We have to try to get there, but disconnect any feelings or any thoughts to that result. Because it might not go. 